Today, I have a discussion with Karen De La Carriere on Tom Cruise and how the Scientology cult has pretty much done anything he asks. But in return, his publicity, the PR, really helps this cult look good and gain more followers. So much so that when they demand people who are in the Sea Org to not have children and, of course, force abortions upon them in the past... They're not concerned about that. Go after the celebrities. More people will join the cult that way. And that way they can control their members as well. Because if you do have a child, you're probably going to grow some type of sympathetic um, emotional attachment as well. And they don't want that to stop them from being militant slaves of the cult they're in. We are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. I'm the host, Derek Lambert. And co-hosting with me today, my guest is Karen Della Carriere. Welcome back to Myth Vision. Derek. Hello, Derek. I'm excited. Huggies. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we're talking about one of uh, the more interesting characters of Scientology, and that is Tom Cruise. I've enjoyed many of his movies in my life, and I actually bumped into him in uh, Florida at uh, one of the water parks there, Blizzard Beach. We walked right past him, and I thought it was my neighbor because I've watched his movies growing up. And my wife said, hold on, isn't that Tom Cruise? Come to find out there were six bodyguards following behind him. Yeah, Tom Cruise had took his daughter. I guess they had, during a divorce, it was just him and his daughter uh, at, at Blizzard Beach. So Tom Cruise, tell us about this man and what happened in the 2000s. There was some big issue with him and, and Scientology. Tom Cruise has had three wives and all of them he divorced when they were 33 years old. What a coincidence, right? They hit the age 33, boom. <laughs> the first wife got a moon, Mimi Rogers. And Tom liked the counseling. He liked to talk and examine things and Scientology saw what a crown jewel he could be. So when he married Nicole, he kind of drifted away. He, he's left Scientology twice, but he doesn't do a grand exit announcing. He just does, he's just not available for their services. Mm -hmm. There's different than that's different than um renouncing and saying i'm no longer a scientologist right he done that he just sort of fizzled oh, nicole's father was a psychologist and oh. <laughs> oil and water come yeah. together yeah. and she came from a catholic back by the way she's gone back to her catholic faith nicole wow she goes to mass. She, she attends service every week. She's become a devout Catholic. She had counseling. She had all this optimism. But something really, just to show you the mindset of the cult, Tom, when Tom was getting counseling, you know, I have to backtrack this. Hubbard put down in doctrines, get celebrities. And he named right. different celebrities that should be. Get the celebrities because they, Hubbard's theory was, people don't really think for themselves. They look up to an opinion leader. Yep. In other words, even in terms of voting, if someone you admire very much voted for Hillary Clinton, you'll follow that lead only because this person has so much altitude. Right. So he said, if a celebrity endorses Scientology, got hundreds of new members. So <laughs> they didn't care about baby slaughter. They didn't care about just no new general, just kill the babies, kill the babies, abort, a force, because their theory was our celebrities will reel it new psychologists right this gets back to that whole thing you were talking about yeah because i mean it, so what kill the kids it doesn't matter we'll get new scientologists using the celebrities influence and i see what you mean and using 
someone as big as Tom Cruise, a household name. So Tom Cruise frizzled out and Marty Rathbun were sent on a mission to get him back. A mission is where you're given exact instructions and you go get the product, no matter what. You report daily on your progress. And Marty Rathbun got him back for some counseling. And at the time, uh, Bella, his, it was his daughters, Bella and Connor. Yeah. Connor Bella, was six and Bella was nine, you said. They were brought into Celebrity Center and they were indoctrinated mm. on good and evil. There are bad, bad people and there are good people. There is evil, there are evil beings and good beings. And evil beings are called suppressive persons. Mm -hmm. Who have six years old? He's being taught about suppressive persons. And then in that same series of indoctrination, they indoctrinated these two kids that their mother was a suppressive person. Scientology indoctrinated Connor and Bella that their own mom was an SP. <laughs> Yeah, that's like telling the kid their parent, their dad's going to hell or something. Like, you know, can you imagine telling your own kids that your father or mother is going to burn forever? Uh, whoa, you know, it's kind of that idea, kind of. But nice comparison. No, no, no. Yes. So, uh, and they did become very estranged from Nicole. This is a classic what Scientology calls third party. Third party is. A third person coming, intervening, and whispering black public black PR. And is this and Nicole Kidman that's doing this? Is it Nicole Kidman that's this third party that's like whispering in his no, head? No, no. Scientology is the third party. Who? Scientology is the third. Oh, party. I thought you were talking about. They're poisoning okay. the kids against their mother. Scientology mm. is the third party using third party techniques to poison these two children against their own Roman Catholic mother who has father is a top psychologist at some big university in Sydney. <laughs> they, Imagine the debates at dinner with that one. <laughs> they felt that Tom had drifted away from Scientology due to Nicole's influence. And that's why they labeled her as a suppressive person. Wow. They felt she was the who. Scientology always has a who. <laughs> right? Right. So Tom Cruise got completely wooed. You would think, why on earth would, doesn't he read the internet? Doesn't Tom Cruise have availability to look at both sides? Because he's oblivious to the hundreds of videos and posts and forums and Facebook groups. He doesn't. Well, I'll tell you, Tom Cruise was treated like a Saudi king. He was just at in base, they made a huge sort of a whole section was made just for Tom Cruise. His own basketball court, his own tennis court, his own gymnasium, his own series of cottages. His it was <laughs> beyond belief. Oh man! And, and there's this famous story. Tom mentioned that he had a fantasy of running. Now this is earlier before Nicole is deemed a suppressive person. They're still trying to get Nicole to be, to get indoctrinated, right? This right. is earlier. He's married to Mimi Rogers, but he's falling in love with Nicole filming a movie called Days of Thunder. Mm -hmm. So Nicole and Tom are brought there and he Tom just mentions nonchalantly I have a fantasy of running through the wilderness 
covered in daisies, uh, holding Nicole's hand. Guess what? No way. The old members were up all night planting the daisy field. Wildflowers. All night they got no sleep deprivation because Tom Cruise wanted to run through the, holding Nicole's oh. hand at this mental image picture. So <laughs> deprivation. But they screwed up and they planted the wrong flowers by accident. So all the flowers were ripped out. And they went another, it was like an all hands. The base had to work just to please Tom's fantasy of running through a, 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 a flower bedded uh, pattern. So now more sleep deprivation and the correct flowers were, I can't even tell you, I can't even begin to tell you how he was pampered. Yeah, I can I can see I can't even begin to fathom how intense this is. All I could say is holy moly, imagine if Tom pulled out at that point. How damaging that would they put so much into this guy. I would love it if he did, but odds are anyone who's literally getting their butt wiped by someone after they take a poo-poo, okay? Odds are you're not stopping, you know, and this guy's just getting red carpet rolled out treated like a king but they're pimping him out you said that yourself you're like they're pimping him out come on <laughs> well, you know that tom cruise had a birthday party on the ship that scientology owns called free wings mm. and it cost four hundred thousand dollars tax free money the irs gave the church tax exemption so four hundred thousand was used to give a glorious birthday party. For example, Tom commented that he liked a certain kind of sushi that was available in a Santa Monica restaurant in Los Santa Monica is just, it's on the beach. It's a sort of just outside Los Angeles. Right. 30 minute, 40 minute drive. Do you know what they did? They transported the entire restaurant, the chefs, the food, the refrigerators, they shipped that all to free winds so that Tom could have the sushi he liked. I, I just oh, want to show you the extravagance. And then they did uh, they did clips of his various movies all put, put, put together in a collage and showed him the highlights of his most magnificent. This was in the theater. The, this birthday party was a four hundred thousand dollar bill, and <laughs> David Miscavige's father that you interviewed, Ron, yeah, yeah, great guy. Did a show how how the musicians got no sleep; they had to create music for Tom, and it went on and on. Anyway, this is all tax free money. So Tom's view of Scientology is one of love and mm -hmm. support they give him anything he just mentions a comment of dancing in the field with flowers and the army of stuff created so his wish is scientology's command right 